Cultural differences. It's a phrase you hear often living as an expat, and sometimes it's true. But when you've been in Taiwan as long as I have, a lot of times it's like a secret code word. It's shorthand for bullshit. Because when you're in a foreign land, you can't tell people they're doing things back-ass words. It just doesn't hit the ear well. So the phrase cultural differences is a way for everybody to save face, which is an outsized part of life here. Now, with that out of the way, I'd like to tell you the story about applying for a job at a Taiwanese English broadcast radio station. I saw the opportunity posted for a job, job title, English language program host. And I thought to myself, you know what? I was involved in radio broadcasting in a previous life. Might be fun to get back into the game. It got the juices flowing a bit. So I go through the process. I fill out the application. And I, I send them my reel. Okay. Now, again, it's worth noting at this point. The ad was in English, or else I never would have seen it. The application was in English or else I could have not possibly filled it out. And I'm just going on my merry way. So I get a notification. They want me to come up to Taipei. I, I live in Taizhong, so I'm taking the HSR up, the high-speed rail. And I'm listening to the station on the way up, kind of getting in that mindset. And the program on, they were celebrating the previous uh, host who was leaving. And... Good for him. I'm sure he's a very nice guy. This isn't meant to knock him. But I'm listening to this. And they ask him, what do you really remember about working at the station? And the anecdotes he chose to regale us with are, he learned to stop saying um so much. And he learned how to script out a radio program. Now, first of all, Riveting. Just riveting. Second, what kind of a sadistic bastard scripts out radio show? But I put it out of my mind. I'm getting in the headspace. And I get to the station. I'm in a room with about 20 people. And it's about this point where it occurs to me, this may not be your typical job interview. Maybe they want us to do a demo. Okay, I can roll with that. So we're led to this conference room. We're given a number and brought to a desk with a folder of papers on it. And the cover sheet is in traditional Chinese characters. And I'm thinking to myself, oh boy. <laughs> it is then that I come to find out that this segment is a two-hour written test. And half of it is in traditional Chinese. Now, first things first. A two-hour written interview. To determine your competency in an auditory medium. Genius. Wily Coyote level sheer genius. Second, am I planning to go to school here? Well, what is going on? And... Why is the written test in Mandarin if the station is broadcasting in English? Now, I know someone out there right now is jumping at the chance to be offended or to signal some virtue and is saying, Well, why don't you just learn the language if you want to live there? First of all, why are you talking like that? What's that accent, bro? Second... I've taken Chinese classes in speaking, and the classes were in pinyin, which they use the traditional Roman alphabet, right? So, written Chinese characters, completely different kettle of fish. The secret is, a lot of foreigners here, we learn enough Chinese speaking to get by in day-to-day -day life. You know, there's a lot of us here. And we are the audience for these stations. I don't think a lot of the citizenry is jumping at the bit to hear what foreigners think about Taiwan in English. 
just don't see the market going that way. <clears throat> so I get to the English part of the test and they want me to do an outline and basically pitch a show. Hey, that's fine. That's fair. All right. I do my thing. And the last section is they actually want you to script out the show. And now it clicks in what that guy I was listening to on the way up was talking about. These maniacs actually want word for word scripting. I have never been asked that before. I'm not talking about show prep or timing out a bit or using bullet points to keep you on track. That makes sense. They want a word for word script of the show you want to pitch. Allow me to advance the radical theory that if you need to script out a radio talk show word for word, you probably shouldn't have the fucking job to begin with. Needless to say, that between the Chinese and the scripting, I had a lot of time left over in those two hours. So, I raised my hand, I'm like, what do I do now? They escort me down to the studio with my stack of nearly blank paper, and they hand me a piece of paper with a paragraph of copy to read. Okay, now we're finally getting to this. Okay, am I demoing here? What's going on? So the little paragraph they had me to read has this government official's name on it. I have not seen this name before. I am not familiar with their position. So I asked the girl running the board for a phonetic pronunciation. And they're like, no, you should know that. Say, what now? I'm asking you because I want the read to be good. Color me reactionary. And I've covered UFC for a long time. Right? I've had to say names like Khabib Nurmagomedov, Joanna Yejacek, right? But I ask how to pronounce those names first because I want it to be good. I'm not flying blind into names like that. So I do my quick 15 second hit and that's it. No interview, no nothing. Hope you enjoy your trade ride home. So I ask the girl running the board, have you ever worked at another radio station? She looks at me, no. And I say, this is not how it works. The entire afternoon, I spoke to no one. I wasn't able to share any ideas I had about the broadcast quality. Wasn't able to share different strategies, different ideas I had, different areas of opportunity I saw. I wasn't even able to tell them that I can't download their app because it doesn't work on the latest version of Android, which they were apparently not aware of. I wasn't able to talk to them about their YouTube channel, where their videos routinely max out at 150 views, which, who knows, this video might even get more than that. If I can speak directly to these stations, you really have to ask yourself, do you want good broadcasters or do you want locals? Because the way the process is set up, you can't have both. The current process is overly bureaucratic, needlessly complicated, completely illogical, counterproductive, and to sum it up in one term, it is complete and utter cultural differences.